In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear is beloved, I welcome you to the last day of the Pentecost Novena. Uh, in today's last day, our topic is you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So the topic of receiving power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you talks about the transforming power, the empowering nature of the Holy Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you, He empowers you. We're talking about this power we're not talking about the power the only what you're talking about here is not just the power to do miracle it's not just the power of healing it's not just to show people that you are powerful it's not when you touch people at the head and push them down there it's not that it's not when you try to dramatize it's not when you try to fall down it's not when you try to shout on top of your voices try to let people understand that you are possessed the holy spirit of god no when the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you, first thing He will do is to transform your life. He will make you change your bad habits to good things. Your way of living will change. That's the, that's the number one. That's the number one. I always say it. That's the number one thing that you will experience when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When you go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, from verses 2 to 8, they are, before the ascension, the apostles of Jesus Christ came to him and they were asking him, Lord, is it now that you are going to restore the kingdom of Israel? But Jesus Christ said to them that it's not for you to know the time or the day that the Father has said by his own. He says, but Jesus told them that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay? Now, when you read the other statement, Jesus says, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay? So now, the power that Jesus Christ is talking about first is the power to become living witnesses of his gospel. The power to live like Jesus. The power to be a witness to the gospel of Christ. The power to be an instrument to touch souls. The power to be the, the, the instrument that God uses to bring people back to him. You become, you change your life to live your life like the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. You fashion your life like the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the number one. You become a living witness. When people see you, they see God. When people see you, they see Jesus Christ. When people see you, the way you do, they'll be forced to transform their own lives. And this is not all about pretending it. This is all about being real with the type of life that you are living. If at that at that at that time when you mistakenly fall in sin, you become uncomfortable because the spirit of God is so much alive in you. Because the spirit of God does not dwell in sin, you become you become uncomfortable. You always long to go for confession and confess your sins. So if you have not found yourself in this kind of state, you have not started. So until you reach that state, when whenever you whenever you make mistake or whenever you fall, your spirit become uncomfortable until you go back to confession or until you go back and make peace with your God. If you have not reached this kind of level, you have not started. Okay, this is what this is the first thing. This is the first thing. So when we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, when He comes into our lives, our lives will transform, our lives will change. You begin to desire the presence of God. If you have not been praying before, you begin to long for to 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 pray. If you are, if you are not, if you have not been so good, you begin to long for goodness, trying to help people. Your life will change. So when the Holy Spirit of God comes into our lives, He 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 opens up to us, or we are open to an incredible source of transformation, an incredible source of power. So this power is not for our own making, but the power of God has come from the presence of God within us. So this is a power that transforms or this is a power that transcends our human weakness or transcends our human limitations and enables us to live a, a life that is beyond what you could achieve on our own. So when we talk about the power that the Holy Spirit gives us, we have to note that the first thing that Jesus Christ is talking about is the power to be a living witness, the power of transformation. That's number one. So, so many Christians always like to pursue power, to pray for the gift of miracle, pray for the gift of healing, but their lives is so far from God. That for you to be so close to God, to be so close to the Holy Spirit, your life has to change. You don't live in wickedness. You don't live in hatred. You don't live in envy. You don't live in guilt. You don't live in immorality. 
you always long for that closeness with God. Even when you make mistake as maybe out of human weakness, you become so uncomfortable. And you don't just glory in sin. You don't just be happy because you don't just remain in sin and be happy. Okay? You will, at a point, you say, I have made a mistake. Let me go back to God. This is the Holy Spirit of God alive in you. So the Holy Spirit has the power to transform our lives from the inside. So it, he brings about a total renewal, a total transformation. Now, this will enable us to become the best version of ourselves, longing for the, for the presence of God. You know, you see this, when someone desires, when someone desires the presence of God always, the presence of God will begin. It will be like a. It begin to like. It will do. It will be like a hunger. It begin to hunger for the presence of God in your life. That is why Saint Paul says in Romans twelve two. Say, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So number two is the power for spiritual discernment. So when the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you, He always gives you the power to make wise decisions. You will not, you will not be, you, you will not be fast to rush things. He will keep on talking to you to be calm. He will keep on telling you how, what to do. He will give you insight. He will give you understanding. He will give you the right direction to follow. Okay. So the Holy Spirit of God gives you. The, the the wisdom whenever you face a certain situation that's the power the power will help you to give you insight whenever you are faced with some certain problems or some certain situations that you don't know actually know what to do the spirit of god will guide you now number three he says the power for boldness and courage the power for boldness and courage when the spirit of god comes upon you you have courage you have confidence you have fortitude okay this will help you to broadly do to boldly proclaim the gospel of god wherever you are it will give you the courage to proclaim the the word of god even in the face of opposition even in the face of persecution it will give you that that courage to always proclaim the word of god no matter what comes against you okay remember what happened during, during the pentecost after they have prayed the the the, the, the bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 31 that the place where they were meeting where the apostles were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit what next they were speaking the word of god boldly unlike before before they, they they hid themselves in fear but after the the, the 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 coming of the holy spirit of god they began to proclaim the word of god with boldness with faith with courage even in the face of oppositions okay so that is it number four the power that the holy spirit gives he will equip us with spiritual gifts the, these gifts may be the gift of wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, prophecy, and many others. This is now where the, the, the gift of miracle will come in. The power of working miracles, the power of teaching, the power of singing. When you sing, things, things will begin to happen. When you pray, things will begin to happen. Okay? Maybe you pray for someone, somebody, somebody will get healing. You pray for somebody, uh, things will begin to happen in the spirit. This is now also, this is now where this one will now come in. So when the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you, give you a, a powerful gift whereas, that whenever you do something, great things happen. Things happen in the spirit. Even the spiritual forces begin to fear you. Whenever your name is mentioned, the kingdoms begin to fear you. The kingdoms of darkness will run away. And also, your life will become a testament that others will learn from. Another one which we shall also talk about today is the power for love and fruitfulness. When the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you, He will give you the power to love unconditionally. He will give you the power to be bearing good fruit. He will give you the power to change the lives of people. He will give you the power to help people. He will give you the power to be there when others are suffering. You will be a helper for others in the times of their problems and difficulties. The power to love. If you if you have the spirit of the if you have the Holy Spirit, you will never live in hatred. You will not live in enmity. You will not live in division. You won't allow your family to stay divided. You always like to stay in peace. You always like to stay in love. So do not claim to be in in relationship with the Holy Spirit when you are living in total enmity. The power that the Spirit of God will give you is the power of love. He will give you the power to stay in peace. The Holy Spirit cannot give you the power to stay in division. 
So the Spirit of God empowers us. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, He gives you power. He will give you power. These are the powers that you will experience when the Spirit of God comes upon you. Therefore, I pray for you today that as we are closing this prayer, which I will close tomorrow with the prayer for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I pray also that the Spirit of God will grant you a enormous gift. May He give you the power to be a living witness. May He give you the power to love. May He give you the power of healing. May He give you the power of mocking miracles. May He give you the power to defend your faith. May He give you the power to speak boldly about the Word of God. May He give you the power to stay faithful even in the times of challenges. May He give you the power to stay firm even when things work against you, even when people attack you. May the power of God be with you. I pray for this upon you, that the Holy Spirit of God will give you the power. Even when people plan evil against you, even when they try to pull you down, the Spirit of God will give you the power to stand firm. He will give you the power to walk against anything that will come against you. He will give you the power to stand against whatever mighty forces, wherever they are coming, either in the spirit or the, in the physical. The Spirit of God will give you the power to stand against them. Therefore, I pray for you. May you receive this power, that wherever you are going, wherever you are moving, that kingdoms will begin to fall, that nothing evil shall happen to you. I pray for you today that as you are coming close to the Holy Spirit, as you are closing this prayer, that you receive a power that will make you to stand firm even in the face of oppositions. May He give you the power of love. May He give you the power of forgiveness. May you forgive every person that has offended you. May He transform your life. I bless you today. That as you encounter the Holy Spirit, may your life change. That you will be a living testimony of the Word of God. May the Holy Spirit of God now surround you like never before. May you go with the blessings of God. May He be with you. Therefore, I bless you today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. And may God bless you. Then expect my prayer for baptism of the Holy Spirit tomorrow. God bless you.